U.S. President Joe Biden on Thursday brought Israel's leader into the calm eye of America's political storm as the two tried to hash out a lasting peace to silence the suffering in Gaza. Biden said a little. Well, welcome back, Mr. Prime Minister. We've got a lot to talk about. I think we should get to it. But Vice President Kamala Harris took a firm tone after her own meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hours later, centering on the horror experienced by the people of Gaza. She urged Israel to take the deal on the table to end the fighting and free the hostages. I also expressed with the Prime Minister my serious concern about the scale of human suffering in Gaza, including the death of far too many innocent civilians. And I made clear my serious concern about the dire humanitarian situation there, with over two million people facing high levels of food insecurity, and half a million people facing catastrophic levels of acute food insecurity. What has happened in Gaza over the past nine months is devastating. Her words were amplified by protesters outside the White House on Thursday, who object to the Israeli military's conduct in Gaza and want Biden to dial back his support. The White House said the meeting with Biden was productive, but didn't cite any breakthroughs. Uh, this was a good discussion with the prime minister and his team. The president had a chance to uh, lay out his concerns about where we are on the ceasefire deal and getting us uh, to conclusion on that, um, as well as to talk about a range of other issues, Iran's destabilizing activities, the tensions at the blue line up with Lebanon, the need for more humanitarian assistance getting to the people of Gaza. There was a lot on the agenda. On Friday, Netanyahu meets with Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. This trio of talks is obviously a delicate political balancing act for the Israeli leader. But some pro-Israeli analysts argue that Netanyahu's defiance of Washington has garnered results. There's more, there's more likelihood of a ceasefire now than there was um, a couple of months ago before Israel went into Rafah. Vice President Harris told them they shouldn't go in or there'll be consequences. Biden didn't want them to go in. It turned out actually to be a pretty successful mission. They haven't finish Rafa, but they were able to quickly uh, move a lot of the Palestinian civilians uh, into other areas so they, the Israeli military, could fight uh, Hamas. Netanyahu's detractors both outside and inside Congress disagree. And as they like to remind the future president, whoever he or she will be, they have a say too. Anita Palvio News, Washington.